Hi, I'm Scott Hoppy, and I work at Y Blue, an accounting firm that is 100% digital and distributed. And recently, we're I was working, uh, looking really at this upcoming tax season and the administrative work that has to go into it. And part of our system was to create invoices in our accounting software after we sent pricing and contracts through DocuSign. And as the client account increases, it just it becomes more and more work and there's lots of track and it's really error prone because things have to match from system to system. So we turned to Zapier to find a way to automatically send invoices from QuickBooks online using DocuSign. Now the problem uh, that we I first was faced with was Do DocuSign doesn't have at this time a, a setup with Zapier directly, which meant we had to find a workaround. And I couldn't find anything at the time, so I I came up with my own solution and we um, we documented it here to share out. It's working really well for us, and I'm I'm hoping it can it can work well for you too. Because the Zapier um, has some confidential information that that I don't want to necessarily share out, we're, we're just we're going to walk through the article, and I'm going to that I that's up online. Uh, you can find it at whyblue.com/firmblog. Uh, automatically send QBO invoices with DocuSign using Zapier. Um, that will also be linked in the YouTube video uh, comments. And description. So as we look, at, as we go over the article, um, I'll add light where I can, and I'll I'll show you a bit more um, in the in the fields that allow me to, where there's nothing sensitive. So the tools that we're going to need is DocuSign uh, for sending our PDF engagement letter, and Gmail. Um, that's going to receive the DocuSign request. We're going to set up some filters there. Uh, Zapier's email parser, which uh, is, is a really cool tool that's going to extract text data from your emails. And we're going to use Zapier to glue all the pieces together and send everything that happens here to QuickBooks Online. And with everything that we uh, do in terms of our automation, uh, I like to add a feedback loop or a message to Slack to say, hey, this happened. Uh, so I'll show you an example of that as well. All right, in DocuSign, um, we use templates for our engagement letters. Uh, I highly recommend them. And what we want to do with the template, the key piece is we want to update the email settings from message all recipients, the same message, to actually sending a custom email and language for each recipient. Why I like doing that is in the message that comes to us can be very raw data, name, email, um, do a signature, the, and you'll see that in the screenshot. Um, but to the client, it can be something very nice, uh, good that's uh, good for client-facing uh, material. I don't necessarily want to send them a, hey, thanks for working with us. Our experience will be great. And by the way, here's some your name, your email, and uh, the amount due. That may, uh, it, it doesn't have the experience that I want. So I'm really pleased that DocuSign allows custom email languages and, and uh, we can really set up the email parser uh, for success. So this is a screenshot, but I'll take you over to DocuSign and um, underneath our templates, we, we actually have a, a lot of templates that we use for matching. So we'll upload the PDF and then like tax forms for signatures. And because they're very standardized, the docu DocuSign will say, hey, I, I recognize this and, and it'll automatically apply, apply a template. Um, but there's other items like engagement letters where they're very customized, not in formatting, but everyone has a different pricing. Uh, everyone has a different scope of project. So we'll look at um, one of them, a client commitment letter, 
And what I've done with this is I updated the title to say uh, Zapier, so I, I know that it's it's set up. Uh, we'll say I usually click Use. You'll have um, me, my email, and then uh, we'll just put me as the recipient as well. And from here, you we um, have the email subject line. Uh, I want the client's like identifier, uh, which is something we use internally. It's typically the business name or the person's last name to go there. And because I'm going to need some information sent to QuickBooks uh, online for who's the email and what who's the name and what's the dollar amount, um, I fill in name, email, and in this case, we send a retainer with the commitment letter. Uh, so I have that pre-filled at $2,000, which is, is really the smallest retainer we ever accept. Um, typically, they're a little higher. And then the client receives their own uh, email that's a little bit nicer and doesn't need any of this extra junk. The benefit is the client gets a better email, and for us, the parser gets a cleaner email to extract data from. And you just click Send. Okay, I'll skip that for now. Um, and we'll jump back over here. So that's our DocuSign setup. We send the email. The next thing that we need to do uh, when we get that example email in our inbox is to go back to the email parser, which is going to be created by Zapier. They have their own they have their own internal one that's great, and it will extract the information. Each um, each, uh, when you have your email parser, it, you can create a mailbox. So you can have more than one mailbox that has uh, rules on what type of information to collect. Uh, what I have a unique uh, address in, and, and I didn't set one up for this video. Uh, so since we use it actively, I, I don't, I didn't want it to be shared. So we're just that's why we're really looking at um, all the steps uh, by reading over this article. So it's really simple. Um, create an account with the email parser. You create a mailbox. It gives you a unique. It's going to give you a unique um, email address. And what you're going to do is set up Gmail to automatically forward the DocuSign messages to your unique inbox. And then uh, Zapier will go ahead and extract all the data you need, which can then be used in your your Zap which will go to QuickBooks Online. Um, so the original email that comes in from what we just saw is like, oh, please DocuSign uh, your commitment letter for, and there's that name that we put in. This is the email that gets sent um, in this raw format. And you still get hello, why blues, even though we, even though our whole thing was blank, remember, um, Even though all of our, the only part of our message is this, a little extra gets added by DocuSign. And that's right here. Um, there's the name, the email, the retainer amount. Um, then what you're going to use the parser for is to, it's, it's really straightforward to do this. Um, you're going to highlight the text of the original email when you're making a template and you're going to name these fields. So I call one a client identifier. I call this the full name, this the email, this the retainer amount. And, and when we jump back over to Zapier uh, and we're creating the, the Zap, you'll see these fields uh, as choices. It's really, really good. It connects the dots. Um, okay, but even though we have our initial email sent over um, from, from Gmail into that parser, we've made our template. We Now we want to get all the emails that were uh, getting from DocuSign sent over. So you're going to add a forwarding address to Gmail um, from that. And you can use the help docs at Zapier. It's, it's really, uh, they did a really good job of getting you started. Um, then you're going to create a filter in Gmail uh, to target those DocuSign emails. Uh, after you create that filter, uh, then you will uh, have all the new messages go go into your your parser. 
So for the, the filter, what I did was I took DocuSign's from address. Um, I took the words, please DocuSign the commitment letter as the words in the subject line. And, and I made sure to remove, if it says complete it or void it, that it doesn't get processed. Uh, I do that, those two, because a, complete, a completed DocuSign that comes over may repeat the steps again, but there won't be the information included because a completed DocuSign doesn't have my special message. It has a generic message. And I don't want voided ones for the same reason. I don't want to repeat the process on, on void it. Um, if anything, I don't, I, don't want any, I don't want any of them to go at that point. Uh, so you do search, you'll get your result, um, which if you just did your first DocuSign, it will be, it will be only that one. Then on the second page, this is where um, I customize it a bit for myself. Um, I mark it as red, so it doesn't uh, overload my inbox. Um, I apply the label, a DocuSign, and I do I put it to a sub label called Retainer Zaps. Uh, that way, this is nar a narrow focus. Uh, whereas I have some scripts set up for these other DocuSign tags, like when an, when a tax return gets filed. I have a, a Google script that takes the PDF attachments from DocuSign, puts it into Google Drive, then sends a message to Slack saying that the client signed and the file saved to Drive uh, so we can e-file returns. Um, but but that but that but the more important one here is uh, forwarding it. After you set up your forward uh, email, that will be available to you on the dropdown. And then you can, this is update filter because I already created this one, um, but you'd create the filter and go from there. All right, so now that we're feeding our parser, we need to create our zaps so that way um, we're actually getting to our invoice. So let's bring the pieces together. Here's an overview. Um, triggers the new email. That's what we set up in the prior step. So we're going to send our new Gmail through that label. It's going to forward over to the parser. That parser is going to trigger a new email here, the zap. Then step two, what we're going to do is search or create a customer. This is, this is really interesting. Um, so we can search for customers based off of the email address, their email address. And if that customer already exists inside of QBO, it won't do it won't create another one it'll just use that already existing clients uh, information to create an invoice that's great because it means we're not going to double up or create extra information uh, when it's not necessary uh, but if the client doesn't exist because this is a brand new person they've never existed we've never built them then we'll go back to the the parser and it's going to pull the name the email address and from from there to create a customer. And all this information is going to be used to create an invoice. The invoice uh, will be based off of the customer ID from step two, whether it's a found one or created one. And it's going to be based off of the dollar amount that we put inside of DocuSign. So let's go up. So the QuickBooks will make will search for a client based off of email. If they exist, it uses that existing client to create an invoice based off this retainer amount that we gave to DocuSign. If it doesn't exist, it's going to create a client using the full name and the email, and then it'll create an invoice in the retainer amount. In this case, we made a $2,000 retainer invoice for Nick. Here you go. And this is a, a screenshot of uh, the Zap setup. Inside of this um, search for customer, uh, online customer, you'll see the search value. We're going to do the field as email. The search value is going to be uh, from the parser, the email. And if they don't exist, we're going to use uh, create. We're going to create a customer. And there we go again, step one from that parser, the, the name and the email. In step three of the zaps, we're going to create the invoice. 
Um, these are all the fields that I used, um, but the most important one and the one that I imaged is same right here. Uh, it's the first one. What's, who's the customer? Uh, you, the list is going to get populated with all your existing customers. Um, instead, scroll all the way to the bottom and pick use a custom value. And then the value ID we're going to pick based off of uh, step two, the finder create a customer. And you'll see an, uh, a field called ID, and then it'll be, a, it'll be numbers. There it is, ID 255. Okay. Um, so that's how we're gonna get uh, our invoice set up. I, uh, I, when I do the invoice, I set it up as today. I set the due date to today. You can make it 15 days, 30 days, whatever you want. Um, the invoice number I do as auto generate it. Um, the product or service, in this case, it's a retainer, um, but you can pick anything you'd like and the product or service is gonna appear based off of what's in your QuickBooks online. Um, I do it quantity one and then the amount is pulled from step one's parse output amount. That's the exact name that I have. Okay. And finally, what we're going to do is zaps, the zap's going to take care of all this stuff, but how do we know when it happens? So, so we can take action on it or follow up with clients or, or just generally be aware that this is happening going on. Um, we create uh, Slack messages to really just keep us informed. So in this case, we send it to a Slack channel that we call feed. And it's a news feed, an activity feed really for the uh, firm. And the message comes out looking like this. Um, a commitment letter was sent to Nick and a retainer generated in QBO. And then we list out the QBO, the invoice number, where to go to review it, the name and the client's email. And then we say, watch out for a payment and documents the DocuSign confirmation to come through this channel. Uh, the payment confirmation is actually something, another interesting zap that I have set up um, that I'll, I'll try to write out, I'll try to get out to you as well in the future. And, and then the DocuSign one is a Google script that monitors a, a specific folder for executed DocuSigns uh, that get uploaded or um, dropped into that folder. But, to get to that message, this is what we put into Zapier. Um, here's the raw text, so you can see the formatting and the bolding for the formatting for um, italicizing in Slack and the formatting for bolding inside of Slack. And when you do all that, you're done. You click on and you're set up. So even though DocuSign isn't natively supported by Zapier at this time, you could presumably work around that doing this method and get yourself set up, not just on QuickBooks Online, you could follow this for Xero, FreshBooks, or really anything else that's linked into Zapier. Pretty, um, a pretty great tool that uh, saves a tremendous amount of time as you um, do some repetitive tasks like, like this in, in a tax from each year where every year we're gonna send out an engagement letter and an invoice and get payment. Yeah. I hope this has helped you out as much as it's helped me and we've shared something useful for you today. Uh, message me, uh, Scott Hoppy, uh, my email is scott at yblue.com with any questions. I'm glad to help out where I can. Uh, and if you have any ideas as well about how to, you've automated your practice I'd be really interested in hearing about it. Have yourself a great day and looking forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.